Welcome to the Sentai Podcast with your hosts, Sam and Jay. We're here to discuss our favorite anime, interview industry figures, and a whole lot more. Visit sentai.com slash podcast to see what we're all about. Welcome to the Sentai Podcast. This episode is brought to you by High Dive, thousands of hours of anime for only $4.99 a month, and your first 30 days are free. Thank you so much for joining us. We're here to talk about anime. We are here to talk about one of my personal favorites, Made in Abyss. I'm so excited we get to talk about this. Think of this as the enthusiast hour for Made in Abyss. You know, we're not going to spoil things, but uh, we're really excited to get to talk about this together. Yes, but before we talk about Made in Abyss, let us talk about ourselves first. My name is Jay. I'm the events manager for Sentai. And since we're not, you know, having events right now, we're going to come to your home, to your travel, to your commute. And talk to you about Made in the Abyss. And with this is me, in a, oh, I'm Sam. Oh, I just hit my microphone. I'm Sam. I'm a copywriter with the marketing department. Very excited to do something other than write for once. I get to use my mouth and talk. How wonderful is that? Yes. And as we said before, we are here to talk about Made in the Abyss. And this is the first episode in a three episode series. Here, we're just giving you a high level and a little deep dive, eh, pun intended, into Made in Abyss, <laughs> where we are talking about what it is, who made it, and what we think about it. Yeah, we hope that longtime uh, fans of the series are going to just have a fun time vibing with some people who also really appreciate it, and that new fans may find themselves intrigued and go check it out. So yeah. Uh, also with us, we have our producer, Tom, who might be chiming in every now and again. We'll see. We'll see what he has to say. Today, sometimes Tom can be very mysterious and, uh, yeah. Hello, I'm Tom. I'm with Sentai's theatrical and marketing departments. And, you know, the board said to me, we need to make a podcast to connect to our core demo, the fans. So we're here to bring you some fan service with a podcast. So like, subscribe, listen to our podcast, maybe listen to it twice, share it on TikTok, share the podcast on tiktok like yes. one minute clips just over and over and over again 50 videos uploaded trying to get it all in there that was a very a very good explanation for what this podcast is tom that was very very to the point oh thank you well um we'll see what the focus group says about it after and but i think we'll be fine oh we have one of those okay okay this is a much more serious endeavor than i was led to believe all right all right producer tom thank you uh, I am going to be on pins and needles to see what the focus group has to say. <laughs> Very good. That's right where we want you. Okay, good. All right. Keep us on our toes. Yeah. So anyway, we're here to talk about Maiden Abyss. And why don't we get started with an overview of what Maiden Abyss is? Jay, do you want to take it away? Sure. I think let's start with a good synopsis not written by us. No one knows what's at the bottom of the abyss. No one who ventured that far has ever returned. What is known is that the abyss is filled with strange creatures and priceless relics that have lured generation of fortune tellers into the into a diabolical trap. Because while anyone can descend into the abyss safely, coming back triggers a nightmare series of transformations and madness. And the deeper you go, the less chance you have of coming back unchanged. But when 12-year-old Rika received a message that her missing mother might still be alive in the abyss, she knows she has to go to her. She must go even if that one-way trip for her and her robot friend Reg as they brave the ultimate darkness in Made in Abyss. <laughs> That's a very atmospheric summary. I like that quite chills. a bit. Very ominous. Chills. Yes. Yes. Lots of chills. Lots of chills. Uh, well, if you're interested in knowing more, I guess let's talk about the origin of this anime. Um, it's based on a manga series by Akihito Tsukushi, uh, who's a graduate of the Tokyo Design Academy. Um, he did the artwork for two different video games, uh, Dewey's Adventure and like the Elibit series. Um, he's a character designer on Fairy Musketeers, and he started his career actually as a game designer and illustrator before pivoting to manga in 2012. Um, Maiden Abyss has run from 2012 till now. It's ongoing, actually. Uh, I follow the manga and the wait between chapters is agonizing because you need to know what happens next. Um, so uh, the similarities of Maiden Abyss to a video game has been reported on by quite a few people, like Mother's Basement did a video about it, for instance. Uh, Maiden Abyss has this sort of video game-esque level design to it that's very interesting. Uh, and they actually just announced that there is a video game adaptation on the way for Maiden Abyss. So we're super excited about that. 
Um, so Akihito Tsukishi Sensei also wrote Star Strings Yori. It's a little short manga series uh, with similar themes to Maiden Abyss. And he has this beautiful art style. It's super lush. Um, and it's honestly, he just does absolutely gorgeous work. But the pedigree of the creators for Made of This doesn't just stop at the original mangaka. Mm -hmm. It was produced and made by Kinema Citrich, who, if you know anime, know that's like, oh my God. They're a great studio. Oh my gosh, yeah. They produce some beautiful things. And it was also directed by Masayuki Kojima, who also did the anime adaption for Monster, who he just developed this world that it is breathtaking and you feel like you could visit it every scene from made in the abyss it doesn't look like just a scene from an anime a screenshot it looks like you're you know looking into a piece of art even yes, when you're yes. at the very beginning and you're just looking at the town just the details the pave the town is old and you can get that sense that it has been there and grew around this it feels around. it feels real it feels lived in there's like moss growing on rocks and cracks in the plaster in the side of a house uh and that makes sense because actually if we're going to talk about the series pedigree uh i believe it's art director was actually of uh, yeah uh, the art director osamu masayama actually worked as a background artist on spirited away howl's moving castle ponyo and your name so it's really no wonder that the art in the series is so stunning And as if that wasn't enough, we also had the soundtrack by Kevin Pekin, who's worked with Noburo Umatsu, famed music composer from Final Fantasy and Square Enix games. Ooh, yeah. Kevin Pekin's made just a completeness to the world because the levels that every area feels complete. I listen to the Maiden Abyss soundtrack on a regular basis while I'm writing. It's incredibly atmospheric. I've used atmospheric to describe the series on several levels, but it just is. It's so immersive. And Kevin Pinkin's work has really like helped to bring alive the, uh, the entire series. I mean, the series obviously would be beautiful and wonderful no matter who composed the music, but Kevin's music is so, so good. It adds this like rich textural element on top of the, visual, the visuals. So yeah, it's worth checking out even if you just like, Yo, I don't really want to watch this series. Please check out the soundtrack. I mean, you should watch the series too. Don't get me wrong. But like the soundtrack alone is just beautiful. So, And it doesn't just stop with there. We also had he, Hideyuki Karata writing scripts. He's done stuff for now and then here and there. Helsing Ultimate, The Fruit of Grisaya, Drifters, Goblin Slayer, which just a uh, you know, resume that no one can touch. Yeah, it's a pretty, a pretty dang impressive. Um, you know, it's also kind of funny that I like consistently have a chuckle over every time I think about it. What's up? Uh, so the creator of Silent Hill, Hideo Kojima, is actually a big fan of Maiden Abyss. Uh, and he visited Kojima Productions in like March of 2020 and has talked about this on Twitter. Um, so I have this like nightmare scenario in my head where, where they collaborate on something um and when i say nightmare scenario i mean give it to me i want this nightmare but also like oh my gosh made in abyss combined with silent hill stuff would be on another level it would be a game that sam plays with all the lights on and you know bright in the middle of the day and still scared Actually, what I would do, Jay, is I would buy a copy to support its release, and then I wouldn't play it, and i just watch playthroughs on YouTube. Let's be real. I'm a chicken. I am a wimp. That is how this would go down. What did all these amazing people make? What is Made in the Abyss? As the summary kind of mentioned, there's a big hole in the ground. A big old hole in the ground, Jay. It's a big old hole in the ground. How big is it, Sam? So this hole is actually like deeper than the Marianas Trench. Uh, which I find really, like, fascinating. Uh, the Marianas Trench is, like, 36,000 feet deep, and apparently the abyss is, like, like 65,000 feet deep, so it's almost twice as that deep as that. That we know of. Yeah, that we know of. Yeah, that's, like, an estimate, because no one's ever been to the bottom of the abyss and come back, so they can't really tell how deep it actually is. But um, in terms of miles, that, like, 65,000 feet I just mentioned, it's, like, 12 and a half miles. So... It's just this giant, giant hole in the ground stretching to no one knows where. Um, yeah. And, you know, we talked about 
it's a hole in the ground and people come to get these relics, these things. And what's strange, it's never really talked about is there's still stuff at the very top of the hole that people can find. And right. we see that in the very first episode. Right. They find little little squishy relics right on the first layer. Uh, do we want to talk about the layers, give people a layer breakdown? Sure. Okay. So uh, the, well, the, the known layers. The, yeah. The asterisk, the known layers. Yeah, Jay is totally correct on that one. Uh, so the abyss is formed of layers. So there's, you know, kind of the uppermost first layer, second layer, third layer. And, you know, the deeper you get, the deeper the layer goes, layers go, blah, blah, blah. Self-explanatory, right? Uh, but one of the reasons people can't come back, and we've alluded to this a few times, that, you know, it's a one-way trip if you venture downward, is that each layer comes with a special little curse. Uh, and the curse of the abyss affects you when you go into it and then try to ascend. So it's kind of like getting the bends when you go scuba diving. Um, yeah, so there's like a toll on your body as you come back up out of the abyss. And so when you go into like, oh yeah, Jay? Yeah, bends except you're just bleeding out of everywhere. Oh my God, yeah. It's the bends on supernatural steroids, I suppose. Um, so it's super freaky. Uh, and there's lots of body horror in this series. So if you're squeamish, um, this is just a warning for you. Uh, yeah, so the first layer of the abyss is like 1,350 meters deep. And if you come back out of that first layer, you just get light dizziness and nausea, you know? Kid stuff. Not that big a deal. Rico goes there all the time. She's a little... Yeah, we can go deeper. Yeah, not a big deal. Yeah. Let's get some better stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, and it's like a sunny, lots of meadows in the first layer of the abyss, you know? It's pretty. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. It's fine. Yeah. Go down to the second layer of the abyss. It's called the Forest of Temptation. It goes down to about 2,600 meters in depth. Uh, and it's where things actually start getting a little... How we say perilous, Jay? Is that is that what we'd call it? Yeah, and it's weird. Like you go down, and it's a forest, like in a hole, and there's still light. Yeah. So this like curse, there's like kind of a force field running through the abyss, and it brings light actually from the surface into the depths of the abyss. Because yeah, uh, there's there's this thing called the abyssal zone. By the way, in oceans, this is just a fun ocean factoid for anyone who wants one. Um, the abyssal zone is a layer of the ocean that's like 13,000 feet down to the seafloor at 20,000 feet. And starting at about 13,000 feet, the abyssal zone has no sunlight. It has extreme temperatures near freezing and incredible pressure up to 600 times that of the surface. So, you know, if like water is able to kind of stop light from penetrating, you know, how you get light down in this giant hole in the ground, blah, blah, blah. So it has this cool like force field that brings light down. Anyway, um, that's my little rant about oceans and things. I'm a nerd. I don't know if that was and obvious or not. For it. I'm so glad you do. I'm so glad I have friends here in my nerdiness. So anyway, uh, the, so I guess they have a second layer though. Uh, when you go down into it and you come back up, you start getting intense nausea, headaches, and your limbs start feeling a little numb. It's not great, you know. It's not. It's not. not it's nothing too, too terrible. But it's not. It's not great. But then you get down to the third layer. Jay. Do you have anything to add about the third layer? I see this look on your face. You're deep in thought. I don't like it. You don't like it? I, no. You know, I, 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 could, I could go maybe to the second layer, but I, I see past that and I just a hard nope out. Just a hard nope out. You know, you're valid, Jay. I know you knew that already, but like you're valid. You're totally valid because the third layer goes down to about 7,000 meters. And you get everything I just described, but you also get vertigo and intense visual and auditory hallucinations, um, which isn't great. So maybe you'll see your worst fear. Maybe you'll see something just, you know, generically horrible. Who knows? But it's not good. Sounds like a typical Friday night. Tom, what do you do Tom, on the we weekends? Gotta talk of, yeah, we got to talk about what you do. <laughs> we, I don't think we've ever talked about your hobbies, but now I'm super morbidly curious. Oh, no. Uh, stay online after the podcast's over, Tom. Yeah, yeah, please. Please don't go anywhere. We have questions. So many questions. Uh, yeah, so after the third layer, we get down to layer four, which is colloquially known as the goblets of giants, because there's these giant, like, pillar trees that collect water on their tops. So they're, like, big goblet kind of things. This goes down to about 12,000 meters, which, again, is close to the depth of Mariana's Trench, and it keeps going after that. But, um, Jay, I think this one has your favorite strains of ascent, vis-a-vis -vis the curse of the abyss do you remember what those are you alluded to them earlier intense pain throughout the body and bleeding from 
every orifice. Just uh, you know, you know, just bleeding is bad enough. Just think about uh, everywhere. Uh, and if that wasn't worst, just to give you an idea of where, the way we're going, the next level is the sea of corpses. Yeah, the fifth layer has just such a lovely name, doesn't it? It sounds like a perfect vacation destination. I want to go there on holiday. The Sea of Corpses, yes. Date night, let's go, you know? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's do this. Yeah, so the Sea of Corpses is actually like a really shallow layer. It goes from 12,000 to 13,000 meters, uh, but it's really, really wide. So it's got kind of like an ocean on it. But yeah, it's a very wide point of the abyss. But this one has a pretty terrible uh, strain of ascension as well. The Curse of the Abyss, when you go up from this level, uh, gives you complete sensory deprivation, confusion, and self-harming behavior. Because, um, yeah, if you don't feel that your hand is hitting a wall, you'll keep pushing against the wall and potentially, like, break your own bones. So that's the kind of stuff you, you have to look forward to in the Sea of Corpses. And, you know... Keep in mind, while that's happening, you're also bleeding out of everywhere. Right. Lots and of blood. Just everything from before. It's just a smorgasbord. You're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad day. Milk was a bad choice. But that's an know, old meme. Oops. Yes, Jay? We're not even close to done. <laughs> no, we're not. Because the sixth layer, uh, you know, if you come back from that, you either get loss of humanity or just death. You just die. You just keel over. Nope, giving up the ghost. We dead. Because that's, you know, that's what we're about. You, you just go, done. And now, this all sounds like a fun time, right, Sam? You still... Oh, yeah. Give me that vacation package, baby. But if that wasn't enough, you're not alone down there. No. No, you're not. You have... You know, just creatures that make no sense. No, like a no. Split dragon thing that's coming straight for you. That would be the crimson split jaw. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, an angry porcupine. That would be the orb piercer, angry porcupine. Yes, yes. I and like that you have these fun nicknames for them. By the way, this is very entertaining to me. It, it kind of gives me a window into how your brain works, and I love it. Hungry Pterodactyl. Hungry Pterodactyl. That one is the... I don't remember what that one's called. But I don't remember what taste. that one's called. Yeah, it Pretty just... Much, the abyss is Australia. Everything wants to kill you, including the environment. <laughs> this is Australia. That's perfect. And, and Kevin Pinkin is from Australia. So you know what? We've come full circle. Or he lives in Australia. He has a connection to it. Anyway. He's from from okay yeah there we go i knew i knew there was an australia connection uh yeah but, but the go on okay so this this all sounds like a fun time yeah great great sign me up why why would you keep going because you're gonna get rich in theory, yeah, there's a lot of like artifacts lingering in these deep layers of the abyss that are extremely powerful things that like if you use them can enhance your own strength or shoot laser beams or give you a key to a type of immortality, all kinds of fun stuff like this. And so people go into the abyss to try and find this stuff, bring it to the surface for research, but also for some cold, hard cash. And we talked about it briefly before, but it's also... It's like the abyss wants you to calm down oh, because yeah. this has been go. The abyss has been there for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's still stuff at the first level, which, by the way, they use the orphans to, you know, mine. Oh uh, yeah, we should probably talk about the bells and whistles system. All the bells and whistles at some point. But I appreciate your pun, and Thank for you. the first. Um, so the people that go down into the abyss, they're called devilers, which delvers, is like a diver. Yeah. yeah. But they different. delve into the abyss. So they're called and delvers. Yeah. When you first start out, when you're a young orphan, you are a bell. It's so that if you get too lost, they can hear the bell jingling because they literally tie one around your neck like you're a cat. And then, you know, you grow up a little bit, you find some stuff, and you get your first whistle, and it's a red whistle. And you, what do you yeah. do when you get in trouble? You, you blow, blow on the whistle. whistle. Yeah, really loud. This is why we need uh, good breath control. Uh, 
There's another scuba analogy joke in here um, that I don't really have. I haven't, I don't know what the joke is, but there's a joke in here again about scuba and breathing and, and stuff. I'll work on it. I'll workshop the pun. And now we have the blue whistle, mm -hmm. moon whistle, black whistle. And if you're the best of the best, you get a white whistle. A white which whistle. Is Rico's mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rico's mom is a white whistle. She's Liza the Anai. Eliza the Anai. No, that's Ozan the Anai. No, that's Ozan the Immovable. Is she Liza the Annihilator? Is that what her name was? Not For Liza the Annihilator, yes. Yeah, Liza the Annihilator, which. Loving mom. Boy, yeah, so, so great. I, hey, mom, your nickname's the Annihilator. Do we need to have a discussion about this? I'm a little scared. What would the bed, I mean, she abandoned Rico when Rico was a baby. So, you know, whatever. She probably didn't get bedtime stories. But I wonder what Liza's bedtime stories would be like. Very scary, I suppose. So down in the sixth layer of Beth, it just tried to kill me. <laughs> Mommy, I'm scared. Why are you telling me this story? Uh, you asked. I, I guess I did. So Whoops. We talked about like these whistles go and find relics. And these relics, they're all over the place. There are, you know, a totem that looks like just a weird thing. A weird orb thing. Gunpowder that never stops. Yep. Very handy. Very handy. Or, you know, a robot friend. Yeah. Uh. Uh, the main character of the show is Rico. She's this um, young red whistle. She wants to become a white whistle like her mother. She wants to be super famous and like go down into the abyss and catalog it and bring back all kinds of new discoveries. But one day from the depths of the abyss emerges a little boy named Reg who is a robot. He's got like an arm cannon and like a screen on his hat that kind of like has numbers flickering across it. They don't really know what it's for at first, but you know, it's there. Um, and it's very apparent, like, he is some kind of, like, sentient relic from the depths of the abyss. Um, yeah, so all kinds of things will come out of this place. You never know what is lurking around every corner. It's always an adventure. So, yeah, it's a, it's a hell in a handbasket in that way. But we got to get them relics and get paid. Exactly. It's all Did about the money. you guys know? I, I have a fun fact about Made in Abyss. Sure. Do you really? I do. Made in Abyss is available to watch right now on High Dive for only four ninety nine a month. And your first 30 days are free. That wasn't Hashtag an advertisement. Hashtag <laughs> They're our friends. <laughs> that wasn't shoehorned in as an advertisement at all, Producer Tom. Very natural. No, it's a, it's a fun fact about the show. Yeah, very fun. Very but fun yes. fact. So, right now, Made in the Abyss is one season and mm -hmm. three movies. Yes. And, and the two of the movies are compilations of the season. So, mm -hmm. our suggested viewing is you watch the season first, then watch the two compilation films, because there is a little bit of extra, and it's a different experience. Right, yeah. If you're iffy on the show and you're not sure if you're going to be into it, try the first movie. But yeah. I warn you, try it early because you're going to be just like, okay, one more. Yeah, like if you don't have time to commit to a full series, those recap movies are super handy. It's an easy way to kind of consume the main storyline without sacrificing much of plot. But you do lose a little bit of world building and you do lose some character work. Uh, you do get some extra scenes in the bargain, though, which is very cool. But yeah, the third movie though is dawn of the deep soul and that one is a direct follow-up to season one uh and it catalogs the journey of our protagonists as they go into i believe it is the fifth layer and hopefully beyond if they can make it out alive big if there if indeed well big we know if. there's another season coming so that was just announced out all right yeah, they just announced season two and i literally i forget who linked it in our like company group chat but somebody did and i started screaming literally i scared my dogs it was it was a lot and not only is there another season coming out you can also own the complete collection for the movies on steelbook from <gasps> yes. .com, of course Yes, it's a beautiful steelbook. I love steelbooks just as an aside on like a personal note i love steelbooks they're pretty 
They just look very good on a shelf. This is neither here nor there. I just wanted you to know how I feel. Always valid. Always happy to hear. Thank you. I'm so, so glad. We we have given you the primer for Made in Abyss. We have mm -hmm. whetted your interest. And we have two more episodes coming out soon. The mm -hmm. first one being an interview with Jake Young, who is the translator for Made in Abyss, which Sam did. Oh, yeah, he actually is the translator not only for the uh, anime, he's also the translator for the manga. Or rather, not the translator for the manga, he's like the localizer for the manga, I believe. Um, or was it he the translator for the anime and the, or the local? Anyway, well, he was worked on both the manga and the anime. So what's really neat about that is you get consistency between both mediums. You get some of the same terminology because I'm sure anime fans out there, you've read a manga that's produced by company A and then you watch the anime that was produced by company B and they have slightly different terms between the two of them. You don't really get that. You get a very cohesive experience between the anime and the manga, which I think is a super nice touch, a courtesy of Jake. And we also have an interview with Kyle Colby Jones, who's the English ADR director for the English dub, which talking to Kyle is always fun. And we had a blast. Those episodes will be coming out after this one. Yes, episode two featuring Jake Young will be next. And Kyle Colby Jones is after that. Please stay tuned to all of Sentai's social media platforms, especially Instagram, because um, young people are over there. Like it, share it. You know what to do. <laughs> Target the youths. The youths. Is that what you Thank mean, you, Tom? Tom? Yes, the youths. That's our, um, that's our de de demographic. <laughs> our key demo. Oh, man. Coming in again with those fun facts, eh, Tom? Love, love that we have producer Tom here to uh, tell us all these fascinating tidbits. Very good. Very good. Yes. Is there anything else you want to talk about with Made in Abyss, Sam? You know, I kind of think one thing that might be fun is to talk about some of the shows that Made in Abyss kind of feels like. So if people wanted to watch similar series once they're done with Made in Abyss or to figure out if they'd like Made in Abyss, like maybe if they like some other shows, it would be a good uh, like kind of a suggestion. What do you think about that? Sure. I got I got the first one. OK, go. OK, this ain't going to make sense, but if you think about it, it will. Land of the Lustrous. Land of the Lustrous was produced by Studio Orange, and it's about sentient gemstones living on an island, and people from the moon come down and try to kidnap them, and they shatter their bodies. And it's uh, made, it's one of the best uses of CGI in anime ever. It looks absolutely stunning. And if you don't like CGI anime, you will like this one. Uh, I guarantee it. It's so good. Um, and you know, now that I'm thinking of it, now that you've said it, I'm trying to find similarities. That world is creepy and strange and enigmatic. So that is a similarity with Maiden Abyss for sure. Uh, the lead of Land of the Lustrous is Foss. And Foss is bright and happy and cheerful. Kind of a lot like Rico. So I can kind of see that. I think they're very similar. And you will appreciate both if you're a fan of one. Because the world building. the Im yeah. You're immersed into this land. You're, yeah. You feel complete in it. And it's one of those series that you will watch start to finish all in one sitting. I know it's, because I did it. You, speaking from personal experience, are we, Jay? A little bit. All right. All right I got one more. Oh, wait. It's I have, I have a joke. Land. Wait, I have a joke. I have a joke. Are you saying that Land of the okay. Lustrous is a, is a gem of an experience? Tom's laughing. You see it because this is a podcast. I think we broke Tom. <laughs> Tom is is cracking up. Yeah, I hope that pun doesn't get me sapphired. That one was very bad. Um, so the promise Neverland. <laughs> okay, the promise Neverland. We'll talk about that now. Cool. Now this one, uh, if you haven't seen the promise Neverland, it is about uh, young children living in an orphanage in the idyllic countryside. They live a lovely life. They're fed really good food. They're educated, they get to play together, uh, but there's a dark and sinister secret lurking behind the orphanage's bright facade. So obviously these shows having uh, yeah, promised like several- a orphanage that since- Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, like like you just said. Uh, so uh, an or a orphanage that like sends uh, it, into the abyss, same thing. There you go, yeah, they both have orphanages. They both have young protagonists, they both have you know, what appears to be a nice, happy 
thing, but underneath it lurks ominous, what's it called? Ominous machinations brewing in the shadows. It, they're both at the surface level, look all bright and like, yay, this is going to be a right. fun show. And then you're like, mm -hmm. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Step on the brakes. Yeah, it's uh that. Yeah, that one. I think Promise Neverland and Maiden Abyss actually do have quite a bit in common. Now that you've said that, for sure. I have one that's a little less conventional, maybe, of a recommendation or comparison, but I think it does hold up in some ways. If you'd like to hear it, of course. Uh, Mori Bito, Guardian of the Spirit. Have you seen that one? Uh, yes, and uh, I can see it. There is the vastness the big feeling in both right they both have that world building they both have a magical sort of feel to them their worlds are both you know uh seem kind of like ours but then they have these departures in terms of like magic and mystery and all that business uh, they also both have young protagonists um and they have they have different tones but i think there's enough of the same dna there that fans of one would enjoy the other and also moribito has a, a good number of episodes to consume which is nice Yes. Yeah. And with that, I think we'll say goodbye for now and we'll be back next time. Well, Sam will be back next time with Jake Young. Yes, I'll be back with Jake and we'll have a nice chat about Maiden Abyss. It's going to be super fun. We're going to get super deep. And yeah, before yeah, we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I have another I have another fun fact about Maiden oh, Abyss. Is this one about you podcasting can buy it at and <laughs> <laughs> No, this uh, is one a, is. Sorry, is it about over. fun podcasting facts? Um, no, it's about Made in Abyss. Okay. It's about it's that all of the characters are Made in Abyss. Reg, Richa, Reg, Rico, and Nanachi are all forged one way or another in the depths, whether it's literally or figuratively. Tom, I was expecting you to say something about podcast demographics. You can't hit me with existential dread out of nowhere like this because that's so true <laughs> and now i'm now i'm in crisis don't forget you can listen to our podcast at sentai.com slash podcast and there it is yes go to sentai.com slash podcast for all the information and to catch the newest episodes also this episode was brought to you by high dive high dive where you can stream thousands of hours of anime all online for only 4.99 a month and your first month is free. I'm still reeling. All the characters in one way or another are actually made in abyss. They are forged in the... Tom, I'm going to be thinking about this for weeks. <laughs> Did you know that 75% of U.S. households are familiar with the term podcasting? And now we're back onto your normal, your normal drive. Okay. All right. Cool. Whew. All right. Got to cleanse the palate with a nice statistic there. Thank you, Tom. This has saved me from my, my deep dive into existential horror. I appreciate it. The oh, Lord. Okay, well, I uh, guess that's it from us for now. Yeah, Sam, do you want to do a sign off? Yes. Sure thing. Uh, this has been Sam. Uh, we're so happy to have been here with you. Thanks for spending some time with us talking about Maiden Abyss. And yeah, I hope to hear from you next time. Bye, y'all. We'll see. catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the Sentai Podcast. This episode was brought to you by High Dive. $4.99 a month and your first 30 days are free for thousands of hours of anime. Special thanks to our hosts, Sam Butler, Jay Perez, our producer, Tom Helberg, and our editor, Connor Clifton. Thanks for listening.